Instagram secrets, hackers get hacked, and giant fighting robots. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 374 for Monday, July 6th, 2015. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Let's get right to today's big news. A spokesperson from Instagram told The Verge that they have now begun to store and display images at 1080 by 1080 pixels on the photo sharing app. They're rolling out the new feature to iOS and Android, and you probably already have it, but there are no plans to roll out on the web anytime soon. This doesn't sound like much, but the smaller image size is one, only one of the many features the Facebook-owned company has been stubborn about changing. Harry McCracken, technology editor at Fast Company, recently profiled Instagram from an engineering perspective, and Harry is here today to discuss this story. Welcome, Harry. Hey, Megan. It's great to be here. Thanks for coming on. Were you surprised by this announcement today? You know... You would have thought like for several years that Instagram might do something like this because there's so much value in doing higher resolution. But when I did my story, they, they told me that their strategy is never to take the most ambitious approach to stuff right away, but rather to, to do things simply and add on functionality as they need it. So from that perspective, it's completely logical that they would take their time on doing something like this. So give us a brief history of the company for those who are unfamiliar with their story. Well, when they started a few years ago, it was just two guys, Kevin Sistrom and Mike Krieger, the founders, and they did all the engineering. They didn't even have all that much of a formal background in computer science. So they had to do things really simply. And then, you know, it's still kind of the best example of a company that was instantly a blockbuster hit, which meant that Kevin Sistrom had to focus on the business. And so it was just Mike Krieger doing engineering. And uh, that really forced them into a mode of, of doing things in a straightforward fashion. And then, of course, they were bought by Facebook, and they got a lot more resources. But they decided to continue with the strategy of, of taking the simple approach to things. And even today, now that they have almost 100 engineers, they kind of you know, don't overspec things or do things in an overly ambitious fashion until they really need to do it. Well, you say that Krieger uh, like would watch videos about engineering problems as the problems would come up. You know, he would just to find a video and, and learn how exactly. to do things that way and solve the problem as they come up, which, which is so interesting. Uh, what are some of the reasons that Instagram was so popular so quickly? You know, I think everybody kind of thought that photo sharing was a problem that had been solved already because there were already a lot of apps doing that. But Instagram was just so simple so straightforward, uh, it required the fewest number of taps. Again, it didn't have the most features by any stretch of the imagination, but it made it very inviting. And they've tried to make that emphasis on simplicity something that, that's more than, than skin deep. And it also really influences the way they build functionality. So you know, as they grew, uh, what were some of the challenges that they faced, from, especially from growing so fast? You know, I think the biggest one was that they went from just having a few users to having hundreds of millions of users. And my assumption was that must have meant that at some point they, they threw out their original code built by two guys and put in something a lot more robust. And Mike Krieger told me that wasn't the case at all. And in fact, to this day, they will find code in there that Kevin Systrom wrote at, at the very start. Um, so remarkably, even though they've had to scale up so much, um, the strategy of not getting too ambitious too quickly has, has continued to serve them well. And I can't think of any examples, at least famous ones, of Instagram going down or, or failing to do what it's supposed to do in a, in a quick fashion. And it's interesting because, I mean, now photo sharing is easy. I mean, there are a lot of ways. You know, Google Photos, it's, it's, it's so simple to share photos. It's easy to share photos in Facebook without using Instagram, but they're still so popular, even though, I mean, people just, they like it. And it's, it's I guess it's still the most simple way to use yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways, probably their biggest competitor is Facebook, which is uh, the other big way that people share photos. So when, once you um, get entrenched, you really have a, a big advantage, and it's continued to serve them well. When Facebook bought Instagram, they paid a billion dollars, which at the time people thought was insane. And in retrospect, it was probably an insanely low price to pay. And Facebook has done a really good job of continuing to let Instagram be Instagram and not feel like it's something that got swallowed up by a colossus. So they haven't made any huge changes uh, that were instituted by Facebook, have they? They've, they've done little things. I mean, they added video. 
Um, they introduced a feature called Hyperlapse that does uh, cool time-lapse photographs. Um, some of the functionality they've done, like adding the ability to do collages, has been in the form of standalone apps. So rather than tampering with the Instagram app, they've just done you know, a separate app for some of this functionality, which is an interesting way of making sure that the app itself stays streamlined. It's interesting that you say that Facebook is a competitor to Instagram because I think probably most people at Facebook and Instagram know that you know it 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 Instagram is a lot has a lot of the things that annoy people about Facebook. You know, I, I don't get to see everything. Uh, it's so big. There's so many people. It's so difficult to use. And Instagram is all you know has the answer to all of those things. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that that's no surprise to them <laughs> that they're they've given a, people an app that for all the things they complain about. But, I mean, is Instagram now going to change? I mean, we've seen ads added. We've seen, you know, video ads and sponsored posts. And uh, is it is it going to change greatly from what we know now? Well, they, just a couple of weeks ago, they introduced a feature, which they did in a subtle way, but it's pretty transformative, which is that they took this tab called Search and Explore. And for the first time, they did things like letting you search for any place on Earth. You can just type in the name of a place. Uh, you can search for hashtags. They're starting to curate content, so they'll do something like like they'll they'll find a dozen great photos of ruins around the world, and package those up into sort of a little story. Because um, up until now, with with Instagram, you really, for the most part, only seen things that people you followed shared. And this new search and explore feature lets you see the best of the entire world of Instagram. But uh, but again, it's doing it in kind of a subtle way because it's not cramming it into your feed. You only see this if you go to the search and explore tab. And so it doesn't feel too much like it's intruding on the experience, which is so popular. Yeah, and there was always, I think, the explore tab, um, which to me, like I would, I could never find anything interesting. Right. I guess it was, it was partly really popular posts and partly things that people I knew liked um, from public accounts. But I mean, part of what, part of what I like about Instagram is my uh, kids use it. And so it is kind of this contained garden where they can't like get out into the world. Uh, but there was always that explore feature, which could really take them to all kinds of places and, you know, have them see all kinds of things I wasn't ready for them to see. But it does. It was. Yeah, it was. It was pretty rudimentary until now. Now it's a lot more ambitious. And they waited until they could do things like filter out porn before they launched it. Yeah. I mean, that the, the filters, it does seem to just be better um, at, you know, it uses probably Facebook tools. Does it use Facebook tools to filter? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, like another thing about their engineering is they don't feel obligated to use Facebook technologies, but when, when it works, they do. And Facebook has this search technology called Unicorn, which these new features are built on. So in your article, when you talk about uh, this new um, search and explore feature, uh, you make a good point that, you know, part of... Uh, the internet is we all live in these Insta bubbles. Like you know, we only see things from people we follow, uh, which reminds me of, I don't know if you've read The Filter Bubble by Eli Pariser, who um, wrote, who started Upworthy, but he talks a lot about that bubble that we're in and the internet is really uh, being hidden from us, from places like Facebook. Uh, do you think that was some of the reasoning behind the new search and explore feature to just get people to really see more uh, and, and talk to more, you know, see more of the world uh, not just what we want to see and, you know, the beliefs that we already have. I mean, I think, they're, yeah, they are trying to expose folks to those tens of, mil of millions of photos which come onto the site every day. Um, but I thought a little bit about Twitter. I mean, Twitter, people are always terrified that Twitter is going to tamper with their feed and is going to insert stuff in there that they didn't ask for specifically. And Instagram, I think, has the same challenge because one of the things that's cool about Instagram is they're not uh, messing around with what you asked for in the way that Facebook does. Fa Facebook puts an enormous amount of effort into deciding what you think will be interesting, and Instagram has not done that. And they're kind of, I think, doing a decent job with these new features of having it both ways. They're leaving your feed the way you wanted it, but they're giving you the opportunity to, to look beyond that if you choose to do so. So now a lot of uh, apps, their growth is dependent on emerging markets where internet access isn't fast and it's not cheap and, and phones aren't, are, phones are cheap, uh, but they're not fast. Uh, how does Instagram, how are they handling, how are the engineers handling that? That's a challenge them, particularly with Android phones. Uh, in a lot of the emerging markets, people have Android phones and they don't even have like the really good Android phones. They have extremely basic ones. And that's particularly a problem for a photo sharing app because you don't know what kind of a camera you're going to get on these phones. And Instagram does a lot of really sophisticated things with image processing, 
that typically would require a lot of computational power. So some of the biggest engineering challenges they have are making all of their features work on even a very basic phone. And, and their goal is always to give you all of those features and not just to withdraw them if, if you don't have the right phone. And they're, they're pretty proud of some of the things they've done in, in terms of doing sophisticated image processing on an Android phone, which you might think wouldn't be capable of anything terribly ambitious. So you have some stats, 300 million people use Instagram, they share more than 70 million photos a day, um, but Instagram still is a small team and they say that's how they can evolve. Um, but if that's true, what, why doesn't everybody do it that way? I mean, that's a really good question. I, I think that came out of, the, out of the way they were founded being so small and you see an awful lot of companies that scale up as big as they can get, as quickly as they can get. I, I remember there was a time when Twitter was famous for having 30 employees, even well after. It was kind of a phenomenon. And now Twitter has thousands of employees, uh, and they're still facing all kinds of challenges. You, you don't ensure success by scaling up and becoming enormous. And uh, Instagram is also taking its time with, with monetization, which they can do because they're part, they're part of Facebook. And so they don't have to be in a, in a mad rush to make money. And, and they're doing some stuff with inserting promotional photos into your feed. Um, but they're not doing it all that quickly, and it still feels like they they have the luxury of being patient rather than scaling up and having thousands of employees and having to figure out how to pay for those thousands of employees. <laughs> well, Harry McCracken, thank you so much. Harry is the technology editor at Fast Company. Uh, you have a great piece on SHIP, which really looks into uh, the contract employees versus, uh, you know, permanent employees, the, the struggles that Uber and other uh, sharing economy uh, companies have been going through. I, I definitely check it out. And you can uh, see Harry at, at Technologizer on Twitter. Thank you so much for joining us. Always fun, Megan. <laughs> Take care. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. A security firm called Hacking Team has been hacked. Hacking Team is a company devoted to helping law enforcement and other agencies hack criminal suspects. They sell hacking software and spyware tools to law enforcement agencies in over a dozen countries so they can spy on a suspect's phone conversations, texts, emails, passwords, and more. The Guardian reports that hackers compromised the Twitter account of the hacking team, posting 400 gigs on BitTorrent of private documents, including emails, invoices, audio files, and even screenshots from the computers of hacking team employees. According to the documents, the hacking team has also worked with repressive governments, even though it has denied doing so in the past. A representative from hacking team says the documents contain false lies. Late last week, we reported that the popular link sharing site Reddit was in revolt. Unpaid admins had turned many, unpaid moderators had turned many threads private in response first to the firing of a much loved employee and then to protest how they felt they were being treated by paid admins and by Reddit in general. Today, Reddit CEO Ellen Powell publicly apologized, saying we acknowledge this long history of mistakes. We are grateful for all you do for Reddit and the buck stops with me, end quote. Powell then listed several new tools and improvements in communication. TechCrunch says that GoPro has released a new camera, the first all-new camera the company has released in nine years. The camera is called the Hero 4 Session, and it's designed to be more easy to use than the previous GoPros. There's a single button that starts and stops recording, and it's meant to mount on objects like bicycle spokes that are too small to hold current Hero 4s. The Hero 4 Session is smaller and lighter, too. It's 1.5-inch cube and weighs just 2.6 ounces. It also doesn't need a case to survive all your crazy extreme sports. Fresh off their failed attempt to send HoloLens into space, Microsoft is now offering academic researchers in the U.S. $500,000 to find a use for the augmented reality goggles, other than playing Minecraft on your living room coffee table. The company says they'll award approximately five grants worth $100,000 each for proposals that offer contributions to advances in productivity, collaboration, and innovation. So start sending in your ideas. Last night, the U.S. women's soccer team beat Japan's women's soccer team in the World Cup. And next, our giant robot shall beat their giant robot in a duel. Popular science says some dudes who built a giant robot have challenged a, Jap a giant Japanese robot to a giant robot duel. And the Japanese have accepted the challenge, but not first before insulting Americans a little first, claiming that the American giant robot, the Mark II, with a few guns stuck on it, was super American. For the record, those are paintball guns that shoot three-pound paint cannonballs at up to 100 miles per hour. And the super Americans have not yet responded. 
but we will definitely be following this story closely because I like a giant robot duel just as much as the next person does. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Why not? It's free. You can also write to us at TN2 at twit.tv, also free. And watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. That will not cost you anything either. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. That will cost you one giant Japanese robot. I'm just kidding. It's also free to watch that. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.